Um, I'm going to say why what Nietzsche means to me. Um, he is the one philosophy you should keep. He is a great philosopher, one of the greatest philosophers of the last 150 years, uh, and uh, recognized worldwide as such. So I'd like to, here's an image to start with. You can think of uh, Nietzsche as a bit like the young Marlon Brando uh, in the film The Wild One. So there's a very famous little snippet of dialogue that occurs in that film, uh, and I'm going to adapt it to the circumstance. So the dialogue goes, Hey, Friedrich, what are you rebelling against? The answer, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> and just imagine this delivered with those dark, if you've ever seen the pictures, the, the dark, sensitive eyes, sensitive, soulful, yet a kind of defiant eyes, and with the gigantic moustache. <laughs> um, Nietzsche stands for, and this is why you need him, whoever else you have, Nietzsche stands for perpetual vigilance against the status quo. I mean the status quo in philosophy and in ideas and in thinking. He is against complacency, against uh, the comfortable way of thinking and doing philosophy. Nietzsche called for nothing less than a revaluation of all values. Don't take anything for granted. So don't assume that we already know, or that we already know how to find out what's right and wrong, uh, what's good and evil. Don't assume that religion is a good thing. Don't assume that it's a bad thing. Uh, don't assume that we know what's true, that we know what truth is. Uh, we know why truth is worth having. All of these questions are open. These are the most fundamental philosophical questions. Nietzsche's against the complacency of philosophers who think they've solved all these things wants us continually to question ourselves. So uh, he deflates the pretensions of other philosophers. And one of my favorite things that he says in the book Beyond Good and Evil, which you really must read, if you haven't read Nietzsche, you've got to read him. It's a treat to read. Um, one of my favorite quotes he says is, he advises other philosophers, uh, put a little question mark before your special slogans and favorite doctrines, and occasionally after yourselves. <laughs> question marks after yourselves. This seems to me that what Nietzsche is really trying to get you to do, to think carefully, to pursue truth, but always to be suspicious about why you're thinking the way you're thinking, why you make the assumptions and have the prejudices that we all come with. Nietzsche is a very radical thinker, a very, in a way, a very uncomfortable thinker. He provokes you to go beyond what you're already accepting, to question yourself. So. He believes that many of our cherished beliefs and arguments, he, he's writing in, in the 1880s, chiefly most of his work that we, that we know <coughs> is important, uh, most of our cherished beliefs and our ways of arguing need questioning, they need unmasking. Often they're based on things below the level of rationality. They're based on fear or pride or self-deception or just sheer habit. Uh, and another quote he says in Beyond Good and Evil, philosophers pose as if they haven't, they're impartial, objective judges just putting forward some argument that uh, can be accepted universally, when in fact, he says, it's a hunch or desire of the heart underneath that's driving their thought. They have prejudices, they have desires, they have habits that they haven't examined. Nietzsche was a great psychologist, one of the great psychologists. Sigmund Freud, who came a little after, uh, writing in the same language, in the same culture, regarded Nietzsche as the greatest psychologist that there had been, and that's some praise. Um, Nietzsche's deadly serious about the business of not taking ourselves too seriously. Um, he writes with humor, fantastic humorist, uh, writes with wit, passion. Uh, his philosophy is always alive, it's always challenging. It's a little bit edgy, it says some unpleasant things that you don't like to hear to challenge you. Um, but it, it's always surprising. Nietzsche's values, I think, are creativity. It's one of his great values. Uh, be an artist of your own life. Challenge yourself. Take on difficulties and overcome them. These, I think, are the values that he thinks we've lost uh, by a kind of complacent uh, acceptance of a traditional morality which wants us all to be equal and the same. Uh, Nietzsche, uh, unlike any of the previous speakers, I think, is a philosopher for our age. 
Um, the famous saying that you all know, Nietzsche said, God is dead. What Nietzsche means by that is, we can't really believe in God anymore, can we? He doesn't argue, he doesn't try to prove there's no God, he just says, well, look, where, where we've reached in the end, of the end of the 19th century, it's not something we really have reason to believe, is it? You can be a nice person uh, if, if you're an atheist, but what happens to your values? What's the foundation of your values? Nietzsche diagnoses that the death of God, as he calls it, social phenomenon that he thinks is happening, leaves us with a kind of vacuum, a kind of absence of values. And this has been incredibly influential on the 20th century. If you think what happens in the 20th century, the art movements, the political movements, the idea that there's a dearth of value, that we're searching somehow for a value that's lost because we've lost religion. Uh, Nietzsche is the philosopher of this age. That's our problem. Okay? We're, still with that. we're still with Nietzsche's problem. So Nietzsche wants us to uh, confront that fact that we've lost those traditional values, but then be creative and find new values that celebrate and affirm life and being human. So I think this is, this is why Nietzsche is the philosopher for us now. Thank you.